Hey, I'm Brad, and welcome back to Overkill Reviews, Banger's weekly metal review show. So it's been like a month and a bit since I was here, and that's because I spent like a month and a half of my time listening to the Bring Me the Horizon album and writing about it. I got my first cover story for Exclaim. Very cool, I'm very excited about that. Oh, and yeah, this band is from Sweden, and they were one of the first bands that I reviewed for Banger back in 2016. When I first heard that song, it made me say something that I haven't said about In Flames in a fucking decade. They are back. Yep, it's the new album by In Flames called I, The Mask, out today on 11.7 Music in North America and Nuclear Blast everywhere else. Fun fact, my eBay handle is actually an In Flames reference. In Flames formed in 1990 in Gothenburg, Sweden. They had a near-perfect streak of genre-defining melodic death metal until about Y2K, after which they began experimenting with more mainstream sounds such as new metal, the new wave of American heavy metal, or metalcore, to mixed reception from longtime fans but massive commercial success. As I said, I haven't exclaimed they're back to their melodic death metal ways since 2008's track The Mirror's Truth with its like twin guitar harmonies, but this time I'm less optimistic because I have been systemically let down by the band since 2011's The Sounds of the Playground Fading. But since then, they've kind of crawled their way back up little by little with each successive album. So will they continue that streak or am I just going home sad? I guess we'll find out. So let me just explain a little bit about what I meant when I said they're back. So the title track, which is, you know, the one that we played earlier, specifically chosen to illustrate this point, is as close as they've gotten to Mellow Death in, as I said, a decade. The opening riff is very Gothenburg-esque, and the melodic lead that follows is as triumphant as you would expect from In Flames. The chorus approaches, like, pop punk levels of catchy, which I'm sure some of you are like, ew, pop punk, but like, hey, if you're going for a melodic catchy chorus, you might as well go all in. The opening track, Voices, is a bit of a throwback to my mind to the soundtrack Your Escape era of their sound, while the opening riff is a pretty direct ripoff of another Swedish band, Refused, and their most popular song, New Noise. Funnily enough, the voice is one of the strongest elements on this album. There's the growly grunts of I Am Above, and then there's Follow Me, which maintains the desperate cries of Come Clarity, the song, not the album, although the song is on the album of the same name. But the voice feels stronger. It, the song builds and builds until the last course is positively belted. I was pretty shocked at how impressed I was with Anders' vocal performance here. And then I read the press release and they said, hey, he was taking vocal lessons three times a week throughout the process and good on you, man. It worked. You sound good. There's also some acoustic guitar in that song, Follow Me, and I love me some In Flames with acoustic guitar. They just utilize it in such a tasteful way. And while that song is soft, it's nothing compared to the closing track. Stay With Me is essentially a power ballad and features some nice, subtle vibrato from Anders. There is a part of the main hook that harkens back to Goliath's Disarm Their Davids, which to me is one of the most underrated In Flames tracks ever. The worst part of I The Mask is more or less the second half of it. The first five songs are pretty decent to actually quite good, but it nosedives. The main problem is unimaginative or repetitive courses. The opening riff for We Will Remember is, it's fine, but when it keeps coming back for the whole course and the course keeps coming back for the whole song, it kind of gets very grating to hear. The rising and falling vocals in In This Life just are annoying. He's like, in life. Relax, you don't have to try that hard on it. But then unfortunately he doesn't try hard in burn and the chorus is just like burn, burn, burn. As I said, repetitive. And I mean like, I get it, you're called in flames. I have a lighter too, fire's kinda cool, but like, 
you can come up with something better, man. It's a shame because that song starts out pretty heavy in a come clarity way. This time I'm talking about the album as a whole, not about the track, which is not heavy. It's a power ballad. But they piss it all away, and that's unfortunate. I don't care for the weird fluty intro to Deep Inside, nor for the piano intro to All the Pain, and neither song is strong enough to recover from that, though the latter does get kind of close. My other main gripe with this album is the drums. I mean, recording wise, the cymbals are just washy and indistinct and just kind of sounds like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh in the background. I also wish that the band would get a metal drummer. It's glaringly obvious that the drummer, Joe Rickard, who's now out of the band but did play on this album, has a hard rock background. Even the most metal moments feel like a drummer from that scene doing his best case study on metal. They've already replaced that drummer with Tanner Wayne, who's played in Chiodos and Undermined, the latter of which I really like. They got a song that's just like, enough is enough, now beg for forgiveness, you fuck. And that shit's hard as fuck. But unfortunately, his introduction on this album is the opposite of hard as fuck. It's soft as fuck. First impressions are important, and unfortunately, he blew his on Bracket, this is our bracket house, which is one of the weirdest uses of parentheses I've ever seen. I don't like the title. I also don't like the track. It starts out with some like pseudo inspirational, we will rock you children's choir bullshit. And then it transitioned into some Atreyu butt rock kind of fucking verse. It's by far the worst track on the album, by the way. I don't want to ever listen to it again. As is standard fare for an In Flames album post Y2K, there's some good, there's some bad, you gotta take them both, and we're gonna make some sense out of that. <laughs> to their benefit and detriment, New In Flames is like eating really, 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 really sweet candy. You stop eventually because you get sick of it, it's just like, it's sickeningly sweet. But eventually you go back to it, your opinion on it has softened and you try it and you're like, hey, this is not as bad as I remember. But then you have a few pieces and it just, it's too sweet again. And then you're just like, ah, I need, I can't do this. The more I listen to this album, the less I liked it. And that's not usually the way it goes. The more you listen to an album, the more you tend to get it. It just starts to click, at least for me personally. That's why I listen to the albums that I review a fair amount before I review them. <sighs> well, I didn't hate the whole album. The title track is still really cool. And the songs that I said I liked, they still held up pretty well, but the songs that I didn't like, I really don't like, and I just really don't want to listen to again. It's very clear that they're not trying for a metal album anymore. At some point in this band's career, they switched from liquid metal music to octane music, if we're using a Sirius XM reference point. So I said In Flames are back, and they are insofar as they proved that they can make quality, awesome songs like they did on the title track, but they haven't consistently done that here. I gave 2016's Battles two out of five skulls, and the band has continued their trend of improving slightly album over album since their 2011 offering. So I would give this album two and a half skulls out of five, but those drums just really suck the enjoyment out of this motherfucker for me, and I'm dropping it down to two out of five skulls again on Overkill Reviews. <laughs> Shout out time. So first off, I'm starting my shout outs off with Wretched Fate and their album Fleshlighting, which came out last week on Redefining Darkness. I couldn't review it because Dream Theater and Candlemas are big deals. But this is like really cool. It's like if Bloodbath were still super fun. They're still a good band, but they're not as fun anymore. And this is fun. Pissgrave and their album Posthumous Humiliation, which is out today on Profound Lore, is the opposite of fun. It's just like the most dark, depraved, disgusting death metal that you've ever heard. You can see the album artwork on the screen right now, and yeah, yeah it's, it's like that. It sounds like you would imagine. Also out this week is While She Sleeps album, So What, on their own Sleep Brothers slash Spine Farm Records. They're like the best Warp Tour metalcore band going. And the last shout out, Mark Morton from Lamb of God and his album, Anesthetic, which has like a million guest vocals. Like they got like, Lincoln Park dude and a bunch of other, I don't know. I don't remember who's on there. Anyway, that's it. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Subscribe. Don't forget to do that. I like when people subscribe. You're cool.